Welcome to Greater Faith Outreach Ministries, reaching the world with the love of God. If you'd like a copy of today's program, log on to www.greaterfaithoutreach.com or call 253-324-7902. Now here's our host, Pastor Elizabeth. Welcome to Greater Faith Outreach Ministry here at BD Local. We're in our new location now, 1326 Pacific Avenue. I tell you, God is good. He's an awesome God. All we have to do is follow his lead, and he'll lead our path. I have my co-host here, Wendy (laughs) Sundstrom. Wendy (laughs) Sundstrom. She's here. And we're here to tell you a little bit more about what the Lord is doing in our lives and then in other others lives. I tell you God is so good. He t- he always tells me this is a journey. Okay? So we're on a journey with the Lord. We are sojourners on this earth. And uh I love the scripture when it says that uh, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And that's exactly what he's been doing. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We had all this snow here in, in the Northwest. People didn't know how to act here. Amen. You know, I'm from, you know, I'm from uh, down South and we get plenty of snow and it's no big deal. But up here, they don't really prepare for it, but we made it through. Amen, Wendy. Amen, we did. <laughs> and all went well. Hallelujah. All went yeah. well. <laughs> God is good all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, hello, Facebook friends and family out there. We always um, acknowledge you to make your comments down below. Let us know what you feel and what you think, and we want to some feedback here, okay? So give us your comments and let us know how we're doing and, and some of the subject that you would like to talk about, okay? All right. So I'm going to turn it back over to my co-host, Wendy Sunstra. All right. Well, Facebook Live. Um, we're we're going to talk about um, you know recovery. Um, our our guest didn't make it uh, yet, but we are hoping he will. Hallelujah! And we're going to talk about praise hallelujah with Pastor Kelly Crow. You know, I've known him for many many years. Um, you know, he used to preach at a church I used to go to. Hallelujah. And, you know, he is such a man of God. I mean, he mm-hmm. has had this ministry to, um, to those who, who need freedom, hallelujah, from drugs, alcohol, whatever, whatever their needs were. Ultimately, to him, it was about, you know, a sin issue, hallelujah. And, you know, God takes care of sin issues, amen? So, and we are all fallen short of the glory of God, you know. Every one of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, ultimately... You know, um, his ministry is a discipleship program, and you know, um, you know he he's had many many um, people come through his program, and they do very well, and they come forth, and you know are totally free from the things that they've gone in there, you know, to be uh, ministered to, you know, and he just has a way with people. You know, he really loves them, he cares about them, and he shows them the love of God. And, you know, there's no uh, judgmental uh, attitude there. He just, you know, talks about the Word of God. So, ultimately, these people grow in the Lord, and, you know, that's the way we all learn. You know, we grow in the Lord. You know, we read the Word. We, you know, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And, and um, you know, so so it's a very... Um, meaningful ministry. It's a very needed ministry. You know, there are many people out there that have addictions, that have uh, issues that that need to be addressed, and and that's what his ministry is all about. So, um, ultimately, I was hoping he would be here, but um, but I just want to shout that out to you um, if you have a need and and you need that kind of ministry, uh, you can go to Praise Alleluia Discipleship, uh, Pastor Kelly Crow, um, at comcast.net. So, um, you know, the Bible says in Luke 
4, 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance, deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them which are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, many people out there are bruised in their heart. They have wounds that are so deep and they need healing. And yeah. Jesus is the answer, isn't that right? Yes, he is the answer. Um, amen, amen. We look to him because, you know, the word of God is our prescription. And I always talk about that. You know, when you need something, you can find it in the word. If you need healing, it's there. If you need comforting, it's there. If you need joy, it's there. If you need peace, it's there. If you need to be freed from fear, it's there. And fear is a biggie. And a lot of times people cover fear with alcohol and drugs. You know, they're going through a, a fearful period. And I just wanted to read something really quickly. I hope I can see it here. And it's um, something that I saw uh, on Joyce Meyer's devotional. And um, first, the scripture in Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 1. It says, But now, thus saith the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, and I paid a price instead of leaving you captive. Doesn't that sound familiar? God sent Jesus to redeem us from captivity. And in the devotional, she says, a sense of security is something everyone needs and desires. Security enables us to enjoy healthy thinking and living. It means we feel safe, accepted, and approved. Approved of. When we are secure, we we approve of ourselves. We have confidence, and we accept and love ourselves in a balanced way. You can't seek out your destiny when you let fear slam the door on you. And that's true. Instead, you feel cowered back and the door is closed. You know, you feel self-hatred, condemnation, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of others. Many victims of fear end up being people pleasers, prone to being controlled by manipulation by others. They give up the rights of being themselves and usually spend their lives trying to be what others want them to be. Sadly, when we try to be something or someone we are intended not to be, we stiff ourselves. And that's what happened, and we lose our confidence. See, the Lord said that fear, it's a lot of fear going on in the world. Mm -hmm. People are different, you know, fearing this and fearing that, but God gives your soul so much peace. And see, when you think, when you have that much fear, you feel like you need to, your that anxiety comes up on you. Yep. And if you don't know the Lord, the first thing you're going to do is take drugs, alcohol to cover that. You know, that's right. but that's not the prescription. The prescription is do not be anxious for anything, but in all things in prayer and supplication, making your request known unto God and the peace, <laughs> that military peace that will guard your heart and guard your mind until the answer comes. And see, this is what the world needs. We need peace and rest for our soul. The alcohol, the drugs, the, the pornography, all these things that people are trying to fill their soul with is a temporary fix and it don't work. It just makes matters even and worse. It's like digging a pit. You know, you go deeper and deeper and deeper underground. But God wants you to rise up and to give it all to him to let go and let God. Amen. 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 And you know, in Psalm 31, 1, it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Mm -hmm. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy yes. righteousness. You know, and then if you go to 32, 7, it says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about um, with songs of deliverance. And you know, 
you know, songs are very powerful. And when they're used in the proper manner, hallelujah, when they're related to God, they're songs of deliverance. And God will put songs on your heart when you sleep at night. When you wake up, you're hearing this wonderful song over and over in your head. That's because he's, he's, he's singing to you. These are songs mm -hmm. of deliverance. If you hear those songs in your, in your head, sing them when you get up. You know, I've had songs that I didn't even know all the words to, but I just started <laughs> singing them. And pretty soon, all of a sudden, this, the words came back and I got a message from God so you know understand that God will give you songs of deliverance yes yes he will and you know just like she said he'll give you songs of deliverance and peace in the midst of the storm yes <laughs> right. peace in the midst of the storm songs in the midst of the storm I remember going through oh my goodness and God would give me a new song you know and I forget about you know, mm -hmm. all the things that I was going through. Yes. See, we can't find the peace that the world's looking for. No one can find that kind of peace. See, we're looking for uh, peace in the wrong places. You know, we're looking for joy in the wrong places. And I know what Paul was saying. Paul said that I try to do good. And, you know, evil was always present. He was trying. He was fighting. It was a war going on in his soul until he gave it up. And in Romans 7, could you go to that real quick? Mm -hmm. In Romans 7, he describes that. See, we, we need the kind of peace that the world cannot give us, that they're looking for, but they cannot achieve that kind of peace. And uh, Romans 7, 1. It says a lot right here. He said, Know ye, brother, that I, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has don dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which has her, an husband is bound by the law of her husband so long as she live. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though, though she is married to another. Therefore, uh, my brethren, be also, or you also become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you would be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. See, we don't have any fruit. We're, we're fruitless when we're not connected to Jesus Christ. See, this is not, this is a metaphor right here. He's talking about a marriage, talking about a man married to a woman, you know, in the physical, you know, because God always used parables and, you know, to help us to understand the kingdom things, okay? He says, as long as you are married to the law, which is dead, <laughs> once we try, well, we continue to try to, um, to uh to to fit, per, per, fulfill the law with our own means we can't do that see we're under a whole new covenant which is a whole new testament which is a testament of Jesus Christ see we have to be married to Jesus Christ in order to fulfill a perfect a good life you know because when we're connected to Christ we don't need all those other things the law is gone now we're under the law of Jesus Christ, which is grace. And how do you achieve, achieve grace? By accepting what Jesus did on that cross. <laughs> See, Jesus died in our place. He took our place on that cross. It should have been us. But he did that. And we and he died. He went to heaven. He he went to, he went he uh he died for us. He took the punishment. He went to the grave. He was raised again. And now we're raised with him once we accept that. What I'm trying to say here, when we accept what John 3.16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes that shall be saved and have eternal life. We have life once we accept Christ. We don't have life because we're trying to do good or be good or follow all the Old Testament laws we can't do that can we go get bulls and goats and bring them back and sacrifice them no, no. we can't do that but there's no. still people you know in in the midwest mid east i'm sorry in the mid east they're still doing that this bringing sacrifices and killing things and all of that 
Jesus did it all. The whole Bible, everything, the law was fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Once we accept Jesus Christ in our life, in our heart, and accept him as our Lord and Savior, then he comes in and shows us how to do these things. That's why it says, he, oh my God, I tell you, I'm getting fired up here. <laughs> <laughs> why before he, right before he went to the cross, he told the disciples, he said, you will abide in me. If you abide in me and I'll abide in you, you can do all things, you know? Yeah. So we have to get our vitality, our life, and everything through Jesus Christ because he'll send back the Holy Spirit. And another thing the disciples said, they said, Jesus, don't go to the cross and Peter. He was the main one. Mm, he yeah. said, no. He said, I must go away. Because if I don't go away, I can't send back the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our compass in, inside. The Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us and comfort us. And everything we need is in the Holy Spirit. Yes, he's our comforter. We don't have to get drunk or get high or fall for all these other things that the enemy wants us to, to get our souls all messed up again. We follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's going to take something, okay? That's going to take a little dying to yourself. That's going to take a little bit getting into this word and seeking him out for yourself, okay? That's going to take a little prayer and seeking him and praying and talking to him every every day. Say, Father, just like yesterday, I had such a beautiful devotion with my father. I said, thank you, Lord, for this day. You know, I love you and I thank you for what you've done. You know, all these things that we do, you know, to keep that off of us, to keep those in infirmities of the flesh off of, off of us because the bible said these are incubacents will rise up the loneliness the anger the fear and all of those things because we're not we're not secure we don't have the holy spirit to comfort that soul and what is the soul the mind the will and the emotion i tell you i get excited about what God is doing, you know, because I used to be there, substance abuse, you know, that was the thing with me. I abused everything, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, the abuse, abusing food or just, just, you know, yeah. just looking for something to fill that void in the soul. But Paul, if you read that whole thing, Paul was talking about once you, you know, are divorced from that thing, which is the law, you're married to another, which is Jesus Christ. What is a marriage? That's a relationship. This is not a religious thing. This is a relationship with Christ Jesus. We are married to him for life. He's not a, a weekend thing or a Sunday thing. He's an everyday thing. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Take it over because so, I'll tell you, I get excited. So, <laughs> the preacher's coming out. <laughs> so, so just know that, you know, once you've asked the Lord in your heart, Obviously, you're starting that relationship with Christ. And, you know, the enemy tries to come in here and there and tries to tell you you're not worthy. And he tries to lie to you because that's mm -hmm. his job. He's the, you know, he's the liar. He's a liar. And so, so we have to know that the word of God says no one can pluck you out of God's hand. No one. No one. He writes you on his hand. Amen. You're written there. Amen. And no one can pluck you out of it. But we also have to remember that he's the, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. When he's begun a good work, he's able to finish that work. And, you know, I, I love John 14 because it talks about abiding in him and he abides in us. And it says in uh, John 14, 23, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. You know, we have to know that we got to keep his sayings. We got mm -hmm. we got to we got to read his word. We got to get to know him and get that relationship in there. And that's what gives us deliverance, isn't it? Yes, you know? the relationship, that's right. the fellowship with that's our right. Father, just like a relationship that you have with your husband or your wife and your children. That's a real thing. You just don't walk off uh, on the weekend and say, "Well, you know, I'm going to you know just take a vacation from this." This is a marriage, people. This is a relationship. That's why I say again that when before he went to the cross he told the disciples he said i must go away because if i don't go away i can't send myself back to you in other words you know mm -hmm. i'm going to send back the holy spirit who will lead you and guide you because they were there with him in person in the flesh jesus was here in the flesh right. but he said i'm going to send back my spirit to you 
It's just like him, but I'm going to sit him back in another yep. farm. Holy you know, Ghost. Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's right. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that and, means you're yes. going to do greater works. Greater works. Because greater he works said he had pity on us because yes. he was here. That's he right. saw the things that we were going through, the temptations and all that. The enemy even tried to tried to tempt him. Can you imagine mm -hmm. that? Yes, you I know? saw that. Yeah. And, and if he attempts, tries to attempt Jesus to do things can you how much more will he try to do to us that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit that conviction who tells us oh no that's not right that's right you know? and I've had it several times and sometimes I've overrode that you know and I went into the wrong direction <laughs> you know but thank God for his mercy that's you right know? thank him for his mercy he has but mercy. yes yes and you know this is so we always say that this is real these are real issues we could sit down and talk about mm -hmm. making cakes and different stuff like that and you know mm -hmm. <laughs> but we want to talk about what's really going on now there's a spiritual warfare going on in this world that's right a spiritual war we have an adversary which is Lucifer. Yep. He was kicked out of heaven, okay, and came to earth and deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. And he's mm -hmm. trying to do that same thing. John you know? 10, 10. Yep. yep. The Read thief it. cometh have... to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. But I have but God, come that you might have life and, and have, have it, it more, more abundantly. abundantly. So Jesus came that you'd have it more abundantly. Yes. And so all we have to do is say, yes, Lord. You know, he made it so simple. Didn't he? Yes. He made yes, it so yes, simple yes. just to say, Jesus, come into my heart. You know, be my savior. Forgive him all of my sins. You know, the neat part is that he's he's canceled out all our sins that were written in the book. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, we're, we've got a clean slate the day we ask him into our hearts. Amen. And then if we do anything else, we, he's faithful and just to forgive us as our sins as we confess them. It, Amen. He is amazing. Amen. He gives us all the, the keys and the things to do. Hallelujah. And, you know, he's just such a merciful and faithful God, you know. And he's a good, good father, a as, good a, father. as that song says. <laughs> yes, yes, he's the best. Amen. Father that we could ever have, That's you right. know, and, and God wants to renew our mind, you know, yes. our way of thinking. Unless we have an entire, you know, uh, psyche exchange we won't fulfill that good, you know, that what you just said, mm -hmm. abundant life, you yeah. know. Yeah. And um, we can both identify with that because I was, you know, I was kind of a little hard-headed. God chased me down for a long time, <laughs> and I surrendered down. I yes. said, thank you, Lord. I'm running. I was running from my own life. That's right. Running away from what God has. You know, just stop where you're at and think about that. You know, God loved you so much that he gave his life for you. He took your place on that cross. That's okay? right. Okay? He did that. He did that because he really loves us. He paid for everything in his blood, by, in the blood, by, by the blood of Jesus. It should have been our blood, but his blood. You know, his blood is perfect blood. We couldn't, you know, Hallelujah. we can do it. We could go all the way back to the uh, Old Testament Amen. and talked about the bulls and the boat goats and the sacrifices that had to be uh, made to atone for sin. Jesus did it that one time. The ultimate. The ultimate sacrifice. Yep. Blood had to be used, okay? He used his blood to atone for our sins. And when we do something, that conviction will come, the Holy Spirit will come, and you won't feel right until mm -hmm. you repent and get yep. right with God. <laughs> I've had it happen. And yes. the infirmities of the incubacents rise up, and I feel a little angry or lonely or or hurt, or, you know, selfishness, and all those things, and God saying, go back to the filling station, repent, right. and get it right, and I said, Lord, I'm sorry, fill me up again, you know, Amen. and that's what we have to do, we have to really go to Jesus for everything, you know, mm -hmm. and give up the, the rights to, to want to do it your right way, because it's not working, that's Remember right. Remember that song that he said, I did it my way. <laughs> well, I tried it my way. <laughs> Me too, and it didn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. No. You end up, like um, like we said, using drugs and, yeah. and alcohol and chasing after men and like the woman at the well, you know, mm -hmm. she had, she was at the well, she was empty. Her soul was empty. Yeah. Husband you know? after husband. Husband after husband. Some she, not her husband. Yeah, some not her husband. <laughs> <laughs> because she was empty. Yeah. And Jesus told yeah. her, 
He said, take of this water and you'll never thirst again. See, we have thirsty souls, believe it or not. You yeah. know, I know some of you just going to, hey, I don't want to hear that. But I, hey, I was the same way. But yeah. you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. Jesus will give you rivers and rivers and rivers of living water. That's living right. water and you won't have to thirst after drugs after being after pornography you mm -hmm. know being angry all the time frustrated mm -hmm. racist you know and all these evil things that will try to bombard your soul when you have that living water it flushes all the other stuff out and the living water from heaven will come and fill you up Yes. The Holy Spirit will fill you up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get in touch with us, okay? And we, because I have a um, Bible study I do, discipleship classes I do, and get involved with this because we can't do it all in a few minutes. But you can uh, call us or go on my website, Greater Faith Outreach Ministry. It should be strolling right down there. It's a phone number there. Call us and get in touch with us. And say, hey, I would like to join that discipleship class. I want to know a little bit about what you was talking about the other day, okay? And what I'll do, I'll send you out paperwork, send you out the classes that I'm going to be teaching on. And we can do this thing together. And you can find out who you are. And you'll know and be confident that God has begun a good work in you. And he'll be able to complete that work until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And it's by the washing of the water of the yeah. word that that helps us change. You know, um, you know, when he says you'll never thirst again, he's talking about righteousness. Mm -hmm. You know, it says blessed are those who thirst for righteousness. Amen. And, you know, that's something that we never thirst again for because we just keep eating it daily. Because that's our daily bread, isn't it, yes, Pastor Elizabeth? Yes, We yes. have to eat of this word every day. And when we do, it just keeps changing oh. us and changing us. And, you know, God just does a mighty work inside us. And yeah. it's a powerful yeah, work, isn't yeah. it, Pastor It's Elizabeth? a powerful work because it's a love letter to us. Mm -hmm. God left this Bible, this word, for us to eat it up, consume it, you know, yes. because this is what our soul and spirit needs. You know, we need that transfer. We need that to get the transformation that we need. We always talk about a butterfly. You know, we were, you know, little worms or caterpillars, just, you know, just crawling around until we go into our cocoon. And I always say, you know, you go to your death zone, death zone zone and die to your agenda to your way of thinking and get into the word of god i remember times i would put the seatbelt on my mind and all mm -hmm. the stuff that was going i put the seatbelt on my mind i said i'm gonna get in the word i said lord sometimes i don't have that hunger and thirst but give me a hunger and thirst for this word this is something i'm not used to you know we're visual people we want to see it all played out but the lord said read my word read my love letter and on my way website it will play for you it could read you know you can just turn it on and you can play it at night and you don't have to read you can just listen to it because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of god and the more you get to hear this word the more you're transformed into the image of god the more all these everything will seem real and right because you've read this word because the history is in here Okay, our future is in here. Everything we need is in this word. And I was like, wow, come on, this is not. <laughs> it's amazing. Real. It's amazing. This is real. Yeah. I said, mean, you're going to sit down and read a word, read, read the, a book. No, this is not a book. This is it's not the just living a book. Word this of is the living word of God. And you know And the words almost jump off the pages when you read it. And sometimes I used to stay up at night <laughs> just reading about, you know, everything about what's mm -hmm. going on, like I said, the past, present, and future. Yeah. And how everything is coming together as God said it would. Yes. And you know, the Psalms and the Proverbs are wonderful for that. I mean, I, I had my most growth when I was reading Proverbs and, and Psalms. It just tells you so much of who God is and yeah. and what he desires for our life. You know, he desires great things. Amen. Great things. Very great things. And it says in Second Corinthians um, 4, 8, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but the, at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so when we come to Christ, you know, we can instantly uh, claim this lovely scripture of 
um, 2 Corinthians 5.17, which says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed yeah. away. All things have become new. And you have to know that what he's saying is every single thing that was behind you, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not there anymore that was written against you. Everything that was written in the book, because God has lots of books up there, amen? He's writing on each one of us. But everything that was written against you has been wiped out. You're Amen. starting afresh. You're a new creation. All things old are passed away. Mm -hmm. So you can start afresh in him. And it's such an awesome experience, isn't it? Yes, it is. Could it's you find so Ephesians? Ephesians. One. Yes, everything God has is good for his children. He said he has good things planned for his children. Okay? And eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard the good things that God has planned for us, but yet it's revealed through the Holy Spirit. So he's telling us that in order to find out the things that he has for us, the good things that he has for us, go into the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. We can't break into this thing with our own intellect. We can't do it. Some people say, oh, well, I've read this book. and I, Hey, so have I. I'm, before I got saved, I was chasing, <laughs> chasing after uh, positive things and all mm -hmm. that stuff, you know, running from God. And I was going to the library all the time. That's when people weren't going to the library. Now they don't do it. But I was going to different theologies and Einstein and, I mean, uh, psychology and psych uh, what is that with stars when dealing with the stars and all of that type of thing all of the astrology and mm -hmm. all of those different things trying to find peace in my soul when all the time it was right here it's right there all along <laughs> all along is right all here along. i just want to read this really quickly before our time winds down um starting with but anyway, you know, we want to find real peace for our soul. There's no peace in, like we started out talking about substance abuse, abusing a substance, okay? Because our joy is found in Christ. That's and it right. tells us there that if you really want joy, don't be drunk with wine. Don't abuse different drugs. Don't abuse it, but be drunk in the spirit of God. And it's many times we've worshiped the Lord and we've gotten drunk in the spirit. <laughs> that joy come down yep. like a flood. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's awesome. How beautiful is it, sister? Oh my goodness. You know, it's, it's beyond words because it just fills your whole soul, your whole innards are just full of so much joy it's almost wants to explode out of you it's beautiful it's awesome it's 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 an experience that everyone should have hallelujah and god wants you to have that experience experience of his love Amen. inside well, we're going to go out with this and it says in first this is very important ephesians 1 17 this is a, uh, a prayer that paul gives to the body of christ to everyone Okay, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That our eyes would be of our eyes of understanding would be enlightened that we may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of his glory in his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceedingly greatness greatness of his power in us who believe according to the working of the mighty power okay it's more to this but i want you to read this and get a revelation of this it says that our spiritual eyes would be open that we may know our creator and what he has created us for that's okay. Right. Well, our time is out, but uh, I tell you, I love you. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs>
with Pastor Elizabeth, reaching the world with the love of God. If you'd like prayer or a copy of today's program, log on to www.greaterfaithoutreach.com or call 253-324-7902.